Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry we're going to be discussing the quantum theory of the atom. We'll be going over the experiment and evidence behind the electron organization. Okay? So today's essential question, how are energy and electron configuration related? Make sure you answer this question in your summaries. All right, electrons and light. Electrons are a very important part of the atom, um, which is actually kind of a silly statement because from the atom's point of view, all of the subatomic particles, the electrons, the protons, and the neutrons are important. But as chemists, we really like those electrons. Um, so electrons are an insignificant part of an atom's mass, but occupy most of an atom's volume. And the reason chemists really love those electrons is that electrons determine almost all of an atom's chemistry. And chemistry is how two atoms interact, okay? which is what we really care about as chemists. Okay? And much of what we know about electrons and atoms comes from studying the light they emit, which is kind of interesting and cool. Line emission spectrum. A line emission spectrum is distinct lines of colored light that are produced when the light produced by excited atoms is passed through a prism. All right, so here's basically what's happening. If, you, if anyone's ever seen a crystal held up to the sunlight where you get that kind of rainbow effect going on, um, a crystal is a form of a prism, and sunlight is, is a mixture of all the colors of light. So when that sunlight is, it hits the prism or the crystal, that light is separated into its different colors of light. Okay, and that's basically what a line emission spectrum is. Okay, so in the late 1800s, it was noted that lavender light was produced when an electric current was passed through hydrogen gas. So if you go back and think about um, Thompson's experiment where he had that gas tube, he got all everything out of it, he just, and then he put electricity through it and he got that, that, that ray of what he thought was light, turned out to be particles. Same experiment, except for this time, they took the gas tube, they took the glass tube, took everything out of it, and then filled it with hydrogen gas, connected it to a battery, and it glowed lavender. Okay? And they repeated this experiment with different gases, so maybe neon gas or hydrogen gas, helium gas, all different kinds of gases, and each one produced a different color of light. Furthermore, when they then took this light, let's go back to he, um, hydrogen with the lavender light, when they passed the lavender light through a narrow slit, basically to focus the light, and then through a prism, think of that crystal again, it separated into distinct lines of different colors. And each element in, in the gas phase emit a different color and a distinctive or different line emission spectrum for that element. And here's the basic setup. Um, think of, again, Thompson's experiment. So here's this glass tube like Thompson used, and he filled it up with, with gas. This is Bohr who did this. He filled it up with gas. In this case, we'll say it was hydrogen. Hydrogen gas, okay? Um, that hydrogen gas glowed what color? Oh, let's, let's use this. It, it glowed violet, okay? We passed that violet light, here's the violet light, through a slit to, to kind of focus the light and then through a prism. The prism separated that violet light into its component colors and this is the line emission spectrum. Okay. Um, and if we tried it with a different gas, say example neon, you would get with neon, instead of being a lavender color, it was more of an orangey pink color, and it would have a different line emission spectrum. Okay, so every gas produced a different color of light in the tube, so violet, whatever, and a distinctive or different line emission spectrum. You can see for this hydrogen gas, it's red, yellow, green, a darker green, and purple. Um, a different gas would show a different line emission spectrum. Okay? And light is energy. And different amounts of energy result in different colors of light. 
okay, low energy lights would produce, low energy wavelengths would produce different colors than high energy wavelengths, okay? So the hypothesis that Bohr came up with is that the characteristic colors and the light emission spectrum has something to do with the, with the atomic structure of individual elements because different elements or atoms in the gas phase gave different colors and different line emission spectrums. Excited electrons emit light. In 1913, Bohr showed that the line emission spectrum um, could be explained if electrons could be in one of a number of possible energy states. One state, um, the electron is going to be absorbing energy, and in one state, an electron is going to be releasing energy. Okay. So electron could move from a low energy state to a high energy state by absorbing energy. In Bohr's experiment, the way he did that is like, for example, let's take the hydrogen gas again. He took hydrogen and electron, uh, atoms in a gas form, put it inside that glass tube, and then hooked it up to a battery. That battery gave, gave um, energy to the electrons, right? Moving it from a, them from a lower energy state to a higher energy state. So for example, if we looked at the electron in energy level 1s, by adding that energy, it's going to jump up to the next energy level, energy level 2s. Now if you remember, electrons or anything doesn't like to be in a high energy state, it wants to lose that energy. So three, an electron can move from a higher energy state to a lower energy state by releasing energy. And electrons release energy by releasing or emitting light. So when it's glowing or emitting light, it's going back from, like, if we're getting that one hydrogen electron, going back from 2s back to where it wants to be, which is 1s. Usually each electron in an atom is in its state of lowest possible energy. We call that the ground state. If an electron acquires additional energy, it's in an excited state. And again, remember, that's not where the electron wants to be. So when it's in an excited state, that's when it emits light to fall back to the ground state. Bohr's theory of the atom. Bohr thought that the possible energy levels could only be certain values um, or certain distances from the nucleus. And he called the certain values quantum numbers, and he called the distances from the nucleus quantum energy levels. Okay? So Bohr proposed that the energy level of an electron is the region around the nucleus where the electron is likely to be moving. And hopefully you recognize that as the de definition of an energy level. Okay? He did not know about sublevels or orbitals, he just came up with the idea of energy levels, and from there he proposed that the electrons moved in circular paths around the nucleus. Okay, so he is the one that came up with this um, orbit model. If you remember, that's the one where the, the nucleus is again in yellow and the electrons are in pink. So he came up with this idea that, um, that the electrons basically orbit or circle the, the nucleus, which turned out to be incorrect. But he still was the first one with this idea that the electrons are organized, and in this case in energy levels. Further, he thought that only a certain number of electrons could fit into each of the possible energy levels, which is also true. Okay, and that's just the basics of, of Bohr's ideas, and that's all you guys are going to be responsible for. All right, and that is the end.